to God be the glory. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together, at least virtually. It is still precious that we can be together, even though physically separated. Let me start by saying to all of the members of the Beulah Church, far and wide, and maybe those beyond who are listening to us today and joining in, whether you're on the Zoom platform or whether you're on the voice connection, I greet you all in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. My wife, Veronica, who is me in the house, sends her greetings to you also. And I want to greet the, the pastoral leadership team, um, all of whom you've already heard. For the sake of time, I'll just mention their names. Obviously, Adidric and the Dunkley, Pastor Trout, and of course, Minister Kay on behalf of Ella Dawkins and Sister Dawkins. And what a precious thing it is to see Bishop Gregory here today with us, joining in. Pastor Charles, I thank you, and Brother Paul, I thank you. And, and for all those who've made it possible, it just really puts the icing today on what we're doing. I'm mindful as we start this address of the fact that there are a number of our senior members who are confined to their homes. And of course, we are told um, very clearly that the senior ones are the vulnerable ones. Oh, yeah. So, have to stay. Yeah, we do, sir. We're the one who's helping Bishop to see. Gregory and thinking of even my own mother, who has got six children here in the city of Manchester. But um, even so, we have to be very careful and cautious how we actually approach them. So, I am actually concerned about those first and foremost. Let me just say that um, in December, at the end of December, the 31st of December, we heard of the first mention of coronavirus. For quite a number of months, it, it, it looked actually as though it would not come anywhere near us. We, we, we saw it in China, in Wuhan. And um, we saw them build makeshift hospitals in quick time to deal with the cases that we're seeing. And though we knew that it had the potential to become a pandemic, we seemingly didn't appreciate that it would come near to us. But here we are today, and I think even at this present juncture, Italy has surpassed China in the number of deaths they've had, some 10,000. The United Kingdom, we have passed the 1,000 mark. And just the other day, Donald Trump said, oh, this is just scaremongering. It's nothing serious. America will be reopened for business at Easter. But today I note that they have got something like 2,200 2, deaths already. So let me not dwell on statistics, but let me just encourage you by saying, although there are very active cases, some 450,000 cases across the world, we've had maybe about 650,000 cases of coronavirus. We have now passed 30,000 deaths. But one of the good things is that um, there are those who have survived it. Maybe of the number that have been sick, about 143,000 people have survived. So let me first of all say that I recognize that there's a very social impact to this, a very human impact. Uh, um, obviously, Adidric said that we're anticipating a, a word today. And I don't know that I'm going to be preaching at you or to you, but I really want to talk to Beulah today because I believe it's an honor to do so. Uh, I really regard it as a privilege. Uh, the pastoral team thought it would be a good idea if I had the opportunity to speak to all of our five churches today. And, and so I, I'm grateful for that. But let me just say, there's a very human element to this, the health of our people and physically. I don't really want to get into the question today, is this of God or is it of the devil? Because that's where the debate has gone for some people. Some people are saying it is of God to shake up his people. And some are saying it is from the devil, it's from the pit of hell. But I heard David Bernard say on Friday night in the eloquent prayers that the bishops prayed in America, even if it was of the devil, what the devil meant for evil, God can change it for good. And so the thing to remember is that when the plagues came in Egypt, they were given by God to drive Pharaoh to humility. 
But the, the difference there is that the people of God were not affected by the plagues. In this pandemic that we're seeing, it is actually touching everybody. And since God would not destroy the righteous with the wicked, Psalm 1 tells us that the ungodly uh, are, are separate from the, from the godly. The, 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 the man who trusts in God is blessed. Blessed is the man who trusts in God. And so God would not actually send something that would affect his people as well as the world. And, 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 then, and then we say it is of God. No, God has got our attention. And in that God has got our attention, we must now not lose focus of what God is saying to the church. Isolation of everybody. Uh, Pastor Diedrich has touched on that. This is contrary to everything that we know in the church. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is about fellowship. It's about uh, togetherness. It's about embracing. It's about um, greeting one another with a holy kiss. It's about the people of God coming together. So this is contrary to everything that we know to be of God. It's everything that the church stands for. But still for all that, we have got the assurance that God is in control. Football stadiums have been closed down. Rugby tournaments have been closed down. Tennis tournaments have been closed down. Who could have imagined that any uh, a national um, command could have made that happen? But something has happened here which has no respect of persons. It goes to the prime minister and affects It goes to the country. It goes to every um, member of parliament who's exposed to it. It goes into the royal household, the Prince of Wales. This is telling us that God is no respecter of persons. And there is a strong message here that goes out not only to the church, but to our nation. Our economy is affected. Something that actually startled me was that on the Tuesday when the, 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 the chancellor gave the budget, he was flamboyant. He gave it with panache. The young uh, man coming to the office, everybody spoke about this new star. He promised billions of pounds to be spent. And the, and the mantra was, we shall get it done. Within one week of that, he was back at the dispatch box offering a package of 330 billion to respond to coronavirus. So what I'm really saying is that God is in control and the pride of Britain will be broken and we will have to humble ourselves. The pride of America will be broken and they will have to humble themselves because when, when, when God's judgment is upon the land, the people of God will thrive and survive, but the people of the world will learn righteousness. So let me just come to the spiritual aspect of this. Our doors are closed. Somebody has said unprecedented times. We've never seen this before. We haven't seen it in our lifetime, but the scriptures are littered with examples of people who were at one time or the other in a position of suffering and were separated as it were from God. I'll take you to Psalm 42 and perhaps for this, I'll just read a couple of verses. We've had some scriptures this morning that have already um, taking us to Isaiah chapter 41, Isaiah chapter 43. But in Psalm 42, the psalmist says, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after the O God. My soul thirsts for the living God. And he asked the question, when, when am I going to be able to come back and come before God? When am I going to have the opportunity to go back? But there, there is a, 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 a hint here in verse Three, my tears have been my meat nights and day. And they continually ask me, where is your God? Verse four, he says, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. I had gone with a multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise. But now his soul was cast down because he was separated from God. But the, 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 the chorus of the psalm is verse 5, and it's also verse 11, and it goes to verse 5 in chapter 43. Again and again it says, Why art thou cast down within me? Why art thou disquieted? And the, the essence of each of these verses is, Hope thou 
in God. Our hope today is in God. We may have a chance to reflect at this time because in Psalm 137, the children of Israel found themselves in captivity in Babylon. Hear the, 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 the psalm. By the rivers of Babylon where we sat down, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our hearts upon the willows in the midst. For well, there, there were those that carried us away in captivity and required of us a song. Those people in captivity, they reflected upon and remembered the beauty of the house of God. Could it be today that God is saying to us, all of you who had ample opportunity to be in my house, but upon all those occasions when you chose not to be there, now I'm letting you understand that there is a beauty in my house. There is a joy in worshiping me. And while you have opportunity, you must take every opportunity to be in the house of God, in worship, in praise, in prayer, in, in fellowship, in everything that hallmarks the church. So it's a time for us to examine ourselves. It's a time for us to ask ourselves some serious questions about our own commitment to God. The country must re repent. The powers that be must repent. But the church also must reflect and repent. I believe that one of the spiritual impacts that this is going to have on us, we're going to have to examine our hearts. Sister Madge's prayer said, when this is over, we're going to have to ask, are we going to carry on business as usual? Will Britain just return to opening up the pubs and the clubs and all the dens of vice? And will all of the, the sinful practices just continue? I believe that there are people who are just waiting for the day when this is all over, say so they can go right back to what they left behind. We should not be so. We cannot just go back to business as usual. There's got to be a change. There's got to be some serious reflection upon the way we live, upon our lives. A lot of the churches in Britain are backslidden. We may as well admit it. We are far from God, and, and we, have, we have done things that are contrary to God. And this is the time for God to say, stop, look, listen. I'm going to close you down. I'm going to shut you down. I'm going to give you time to reflect, time to think, time to work out, and come to the conclusion that this is a time to be serious about God. We cannot meet as we would love to do, but it's a time for prayer. Over and over again, I've heard in this pandemic, um, religious leaders have gone to Second Chronicles chapter 7, and particularly verses 13 and 14. In that scripture, God has already answered the prayer of Solomon. He has answered it in verse 12. But then God turns and reminds him in 13, if I shut up heaven so that there is no rain. If I send the locusts so that there is a famine, and if I send a pestilence on the land, there is a simple formula for my people to follow. Number one, my people must humble themselves. It's a time for humility. Pride has ruled for too long. We have to humble ourselves before God. Number two, they must seek my face. They must pray. I'm sorry. Number two, pray. We have got to be prayerful we've been driven to prayer whether we like it or not number three seek my face and number four is amazing turn from your wicked ways bishop Sidney alexander dunn preaching the scripture many years ago asked the question of the audience how can there be wicked ways in god's people but that's what god is saying if there be any wicked ways and psalm 139 says so lord you have searched me and you've known me you know my down sitting you know my uprising you know if there are any wicked ways in me. So it's a time for us to reflect upon our own individual lives, reflect upon our churches, reflect on, our, on the way we minister, the way we live, and if there are wicked ways to turn from that. Psalm 84 says, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! How wonderful, how beautiful! My heart longs and yearns for the courts of God, for the living God. And even as we are yearning now, I pray that we would remember the beauty of the house of God. In that psalm, it says in 84, he says, one day in the house of God is better than to spend our days elsewhere. Even one day. And it was in the 10th verse of that psalm, 
84 that he says, it's better to be in God's house even for one day than to spend our time elsewhere. So in bringing this to some sort of conclusion, let me just say, we have to ask ourselves, what is God saying to us? It's a time for crying out to God. It's a time for seeking God's face. It's a time for taking stock. It's a time for being prayerful. It's a time for being more vigilant. It's a time for humility. It's a time for drawing close to God. And all of the things that we have taken for granted concerning the church and concerning concerning, we must put away pride. That haughty spirit that goes before Paul, it must go from us. We must surrender ourselves to God. The church, therefore, must come to a place where it be the church. Let the church be the church. The church reflect. The church, the, 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 the non-churches not have the power to pray the plague off the people, but the church of God does. The church of God, the, the people that do know their God, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and shall do exploits. The pride of the nation must be broken. We must turn to God. But let me just leave a message of hope. We shall rise again. We shall come back again. We shall overcome. The 35th chapter of Isaiah and verse 10. I'm going to close on this. And it is the prophet Isaiah seeing a time in his vision when the redeemed or the ransom of the Lord shall come back to Zion. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. There is come a time when we shall have the opportunity to rejoice again. We shall take down our hearts from the willows. We shall come back together as the people of God and we will we will realize how privileged we are and how blessed we are like david we will drink again water from the well of bethlehem and we shall be god's people that god always intended us to be may god bless you may god keep you remember the elderly remember the infirm remember those that are shut in even those that we can't go into their homes we can leave something outside their doors that will be a blessing to them we can call, we can text, we can, we can connect. The challenge is to stay the church. The church has not been destroyed. Pastor Diedrich said we are shut in, but we are not shut up. We must speak, we must articulate, we must communicate because we are God's people and shall remain blessed. God bless you all, Beulah, in Jesus' name.